Hey guys, I have been just really excited about stamp carving and maybe lino cut recently. So I was thinking about it and then I saw Kat from Meow Meow Kapow's recent collaboration with Jennifer Charlie where she did some stamp carving and printing and that inspired me to basically just find all of the white erasers that I owned and just cut them up and I had so much fun that I thought I've got to try this out for real. So I bought a whole bunch of supplies to try out with you guys. And I feel like if you're starting out, it can be kind of confusing. So I just wanted to share what I have. So this first thing here is the SD 3-in-1 Lino Cutter and Bar and & Kit. It's five cutters, a handle, burnishing tool, and desk toy. It's made in England. It's kind of like one of those all-in-one kits and thought it would be useful and serve several purposes. So when you take it out, it looks like this. It's really tiny and kind of cute. So when you use it like this, you can use it as a baron. And then when you unscrew the top, it is a storage container for your cutters. And the cutters come like this. And this handle is also where you put the cutters. You put it in this semicircle part here. You can put that on first. And then you take these, don't hurt yourself, and put it in the semicircle and tighten it up. I haven't used this a ton yet. I used it a little bit on some soft cut linoleum, and that was perfectly fine. Of course, this is just intro level tools but the cheapest way, or one of the cheapest ways to get started. I like that this doubles as a storage container since there are tons of tiny little sharp objects that are easy to get lost and you don't have to worry about that. And then when you're all done, you can put it away. But if you want to upgrade from that, this is what you should get. This is a Befile. File, I hear people say file, but you normally pronounce that P, but only a little bit. File, file. It's a Swiss made tool. And this is one millimeter V tool. And it's probably the most expensive of all the stuff that I got for this venture. And this is supposed to be really well made and really sharp. I have to get a strop to keep it sharp. Be really careful with these, because they will cut. Don't shank yourself. Okay, I got all these cutters. What am I gonna cut? All of these. I got a ton of little tiny samples of different ones so that I could figure out what I like. First, we have the Factis print block. This is supposed to be so soft that you can carve into it with a pencil. And I was curious about this just because I have hand strength issues and I know that some other people do and they might be interested in printmaking and I thought this could maybe be a viable option. I don't know what it'll be like, but I'm definitely going to do a review on this and you'll see. Then this is SD Soft Cut Lino. This is softer than regular linoleum. I cut a little bit out of it. I made a little stamp and that was pretty easy to cut. It was not quite as easy as cutting an eraser, but it was pretty easy. Next is the Factiste Artist Carving Block. I've seen a lot of people use this one, so 
I'm really intrigued to see how it turns out. This is vinyl, it's latex free, so that's really important to me because I have a latex allergy. It feels pretty soft and rubbery. It is blue all the way through. I, I don't know, but I feel like this is gonna be a good one. Now, back from SD, I feel like, I guess SD makes a lot of lino stuff. The Master Cut, this is two pretty thin blocks and it's pretty soft. I feel a little bit stiffer than the Factice. We'll see. This is the Easy Cut printing block. I thought this was going to be a rubber block, but it is not. It's a pretty thin piece of foam, like styrene. I really have no idea what that experience is going to be like, and it's mounted on cardboard that's about as thick as the styrene. Styrene gets dirty pretty easily, and I think I could like, I don't know if you can see that, I could damage the surface with my nail. I don't know how well this will hold detail, but I guess we'll see. And I got two types of traditional linoleum. This is the Battleship Grey Linoleum. This is from SD, and it's got this backing. These are supposed to be a lot harder than the other ones, but actually this is quite flexible. So I'm curious to see what it'll be like. I guess that means that it's new. Apparently old linoleum is really hard and really difficult and crumbly. Not crumbly, but brittle. This is quite flexible and it smells, you can smell, it's not a bad smell. That's a smell of um, linseed oil. It's linseed oil and dust. This one is an Abig, I think, linoleum block. This one is also quite flexible, but not as flexy as that one, actually. And it also has this cloth backing. So I'm really curious to see what these are gonna be like in comparison to the softer cutting material. So those are all of the stamping blocks. What am I gonna stamp with? Well, here are my inks. These are from Tsukineko, the Memento inks. I think this is the Beach Party color collection. I've got Bahama Blue, Hair Tart, Rosebud, and Dandelion. These are adorable. I think these are a lot cheaper in the US than they are here. And you can stack them, which is really nice. They are a dye ink, not a pigment ink. And the pads are quite juicy. And they have a little bit of a fragrance to them, but not like strong, it's quite pleasant. In addition to those colors, I also have this light ink, the Versa Magic. It's a chalk ink, which means that it is a pigment ink and it dries matte. Actually, if you use a Hobonichi, then you can use these in your planner and they will not bleed through. Just a note, because the mementos will. So it's the same deal. It's got this cute shape, quite pigmented. And this one can go on a variety of surfaces. And if I have a white, of course, I have to have a black. So here is the VersaFine Claire. This is pretty new. This is their black ink. This is a pigment ink. I can watercolor with this. That's part of the reason why I got it. And also, apparently, it is really, really good at picking up details. It is super inky. Oh, and this is very tight, so you don't have to worry about your ink pad drying up. So I got a bunch of ink. I know that traditionally you would use printmaking ink and roll it out with a bar in, but since I'm just starting, I didn't want to get something. It took up a lot of space and could be messy and I couldn't use for anything else. I also got this Olfa cutter. It's just your regular cutter. You can get probably something at the dollar store, but this is Japan made. And I also got some wet wipes to clean off my stamps. So the last thing that you'll need is paper. I have this Clairefontaine transparent paper, tracing paper that you can use for transferring your designs onto the box. It's made in France. Quality is actually really good. 
They're quite sturdy paper. It's easy to write on. They're pretty transparent. I like it a lot. And I'm not used to getting paper this way, so it's kind of cute. And then I also got three different types of printmaking paper. There's not really much for you to see. I got the Fabriano Rosa Pina, the Canson Edition, and the Fabriano Unica. I'll probably also be trying these out for mixed media uses and seeing if they could even be used for watercolor. So that's it. These are all of the supplies that I got for stamp making. In the future, I'll probably be doing reviews and making a tutorial of how to make your own little stamps or little prints. And I have a project that I'm really, really excited about that you will be seeing next month. I hope that you enjoyed this. And even though it was a little different, it was interesting. And if you've ever been curious about how to get started in lino cut or stamp making, that this is helpful. Thank you also very much to my Patreons who are always supporting me. It means so much to me that you stick by me. See you guys next time. Bye.